Hey, it's Bob Cook here again. We're talking about this wonderful model of Hawkins and Showett, which is a seven a, a seven eyed model supervision. First came out in their book, 1989, uh, Supervision in the Health and Professions. I teach this model a lot to um, therapists, supervisors, and uh, this is a part. Of, this is a series of videos to start explaining clinically what I've been teaching for a long time. And we've done the first mode, which is behavioural observations and skills and painting a picture of the client. We've done the second, which is looking at clinical theory, treatment, intervention, focusing and where the, uh, the, the supervisor will go. We've looked at the third and fourth uh, stages, which is all about transference, counter-transference and systemic desensitisation. Uh, we looked at five, which is talking about parallel processes, and that's really six as well. And now we're on to uh, the last uh, real part of this uh, model, which used to be called the organisational mode, and more recently they've, they've included the wider context as a whole, uh, society as, as a whole, as well as organisations. And... Um, we're going to finish off the seven stage, and I've got Rory Lee Oaks here again for our seventh one. And I was thinking about the organisational mode, and um, well, we could just have a talk about it, yeah. me and you, yeah. rather than the play it out. And then what I was thinking of most, and be interested in what you're thinking of, um, was about um, harm and protection. Yes. And when you said, and uh, I can't remember which mode it was now. But you said, maybe it was even the second, mm. I think it was we talking about treatment and contracts. Yes. You were talking about, well, it's a really real life existential yeah, um, life problem death. that he might kill himself. Yeah. And I thought, oh, for your client then, yeah. um, what might your client do? So uh, I, I was thinking in terms of our ethics in the yes. transaction analysis world, um, you know, and ethical codes. So... If you were to think of ethical codes or organisational issues, what what um, occurs to you? Well, it, it occurs it occurs to me that I have no control over my client's son because even the police didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. So I think that although it's very sad, I, I don't think ethically I've got I've got anything to kind of um, concern myself about. In terms of my clients, you never mentioned she was going to take your own life there was never any right, so quite clear about quite it. clear it you know and, and she talked a lot about the future mm -hmm. a lot about you know you know i've not brought that but her other a daughter she's got a daughter okay. um but she never she never she never brought that um you know she did she did say that he was a, a drug user and it was he was buying drugs but she never said who she was buying them off mm -hmm. and there was never any kind of indication that he was trafficking them. In other words, he was bringing lumps no. of cocaine or heroin. Um, so I wasn't. I wasn't. There's no real ethics. No there. real ethics. So in terms of organisations, um, one of the things I was thinking about, which perhaps didn't even come into this, but I'd like to bring in the conversation, sure. is the three-way contracts. Um, things like you know contracts with the husband, contracts with her, or whether. You know, I, I was thinking of the charity you work with sure. particularly, whether, which is an interesting question I often get asked in mode seven. Sure. Which is, does the ch charity, or even if it was a school, for example, yeah. uh, what's their policy towards, um, you know, if they think I don't know, a client's going to kill themselves or harm themselves, or, you know, I was thinking of drugs here or criminal issues. Sure. Is, do, 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 is there anything built in about sharing confidentiality or anything that they yeah. need to know? So that's a good point, Bob. So I, I work for the BACP Code of Ethics, and uh, I, amal I make an amalgam of that with the policies and procedures mm. of the organisation, mm. and then that lives in the contract. Yeah. So I join them together, and then the client has a clear understanding of what constitutes me breaching confidentiality. Good. Um, and the two real differences is harm to self and harm to others mm. that the organisation has. Um, yeah. So, in other words, you're saying built into your contract, you might breach confidentiality to the organisation yes. if you thought it was live. 
Yeah, if I if I thought that my client was in the process of of going to you know commit suicide or mm-hmm. cause serious harm to herself or others. Yeah, and of course I know that you work in schools. I did. Yeah. So I've always been interested in the three-way contract between the school, the client, mm. and you know the counsellor. Yeah. So how does that work? Well, um, in the school I worked at, we we had a contract that was was written in a way that we could share relevant information. Um, but gen- generally speaking, um, it was it was the same contract as an adult one. They were very. They were okay. very okay about that. So, so I've also know that you've worked in situations where the stakeholders, which may want, you know, a yeah, different there's, process. There's, I, I, when I worked, I didn't work as a counsellor in a, in a, a, I worked in the hostel, and they had a, you know, a, I've known that some uh, rehabilitation um, mm-hmm. organisations mm-hmm. have a clear um, mm-hmm. part of confidentiality if someone's topping the medication up with street drugs that they'd have that the council would have to break confidentiality so for instance it's not unusual for some someone taking heroin to get a, a script of methadone or oh, another okay. or another okay. form of or a blocker or something like yeah. that um but what they're worried about is that if they take that and they top it up with street drugs is they could have a heart attack or could make themselves ill so it's not unusual Mm. For for the organisational contract to include, if you tell me you're using street drugs, then then mm. I will have to break confidentiality yeah. because they usually have a doctor um, within the within the clinical setting who could then take a view of what they're using and alter the mm. yeah interesting yeah okay that seems very clear okay so this is what happening in mode seven these are the sort of organisational questions you could have. Okay, I think we've come to the end of this. Um, thank you very much, Rory. I, I think that's been marvellous. I know this has been made up and it's been quite a stretch for you, but yes. there's an interesting thing in the break, which is off camera. Yes. Is that, it's <laughs> that it, it became quite live for you, even though this is a made up. It's, it's really interesting. And the, and the background is last night I, 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 I took a cue from friends of mine who are actors and I wrote a backstory. For this person, oh. and then learn the backstory. So that's what actors do, isn't it? And, and that's what I've been doing today. I've been acting. And um, but what I wasn't prepared for was um, having to to put emotions onto this person that's never existed yes. in my life, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and to react to those. So if there's any Oscars doing the rounds, you, you know where I am. <laughs> well, I, thank, I want to thank you very much. Yeah, thanks very much.